feeling sadness, it's okay. There's a lot of people right now experiencing a wave of grief. And I want to share with you where the wave of grief is coming from and what it is that you're meant to do with it. The wave of grief comes from the fact that we've had a recent incoming energy that asked you just to anchor into the pause. And so you did. Something not at the mental level, by the way. You didn't sit down and go, okay, God sent a memo and the memo said, I've got a pause, so I'm pausing. It was like this organic, intuitive, natural flow that would have felt for some of you a little bit weird, for others of you a little bit of a relief. But as you step into the pause moment, you meet yourself, you stop running away, and it can feel like you're shifting reality, because you are. You're shifting out of the analytical realm, which is a reality, into the heart, which is a deeper, truer, multidimensional reality. This, the brain, is kind of like a a prison cell. It's the mental prison. And it's very two-dimensional. It's not even 3D. It's very 2D in the sense that it's kind of like a flat plane. There's no way you can really go there except circle, 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 or around your own thoughts and you keep circling around your own thoughts as you step into the heart which is what the pause facilitates it facilitates that shift from head into heart and once that shift occurs yes it can feel peaceful and after the peace a surprise comes a little bit of an unwelcome surprise sadness And as that sadness rises, it can play in the background like a very subtle melancholy. Or it can play in the foreground like a deep grief. Wherever you are in that scale, from a subtle melancholy to a deep grief, that is what you're letting go of. And where it comes from is the reckoning. Wow. I was locked out of this place. That's what's going on at the cellular level, at the energetic level, is the realization I was distracted. I was distorted. I was stuck in illusion. I was lost to confusion. By the way, if there's a strange background sound, there is crazy beautiful wind and rain going on right now. As you shift into the heart, most people would go, oh, yes, you know, I'm shifting into love and therefore I should feel. This is where we make a big mistake when we go, I should feel happy now. I should feel okay now. I should feel lighter now. You feel what you feel now. And what you feel is a purging, a releasing and a letting go. So do you notice that as I'm speaking to you, there's very, very subtle, little pause moments. And every time I give you one of those pause moments, it's an opportunity to just sink deeper into yourself because we've spoken about this word in the spiritual community not just here on my channel but within the spiritual community we've spoken about this word called embodiment and when embodiment is a mental thought it's not embodiment no matter how deeply you understand what it means embodiment is when you stop and drop into the heart when you stop and center into an actual anchor point inside of you because that's what the heart is it's an anchor point and the grief is realizing I've been locked out of myself for so long and I was sad because I couldn't get back in but I didn't know that I was sad because I was living in this two-dimensional realm where I kept circling around my own thoughts totally locked out of my own self my own feelings my own authenticity and the thing is, when you're up in your head, you, you, you almost can't even say that or see that. Oh, I'm locked out of my heart or, oh, I can't see myself. You, when you're up in the head, you've got to go, I'm authentic. I'm the most authentic person that I've ever known. Of course I'm authentic. This is me, baby. In my authenticity. But your head will convince you that you are. The heart is a feeling. See, here's where a lot of people reach a bit of a danger zone, though, because now they're getting into the heart territory. Oh, oh, sadness comes, grief comes, whatever shape or form it takes. And then what happens? You start asking why, why, why? And then you put yourself back in prison. In other words, you put yourself back up in the mental realm because now you're looking for an analytical reason to explain an emotional, energetic release. So let energy happen at the energetic level. If you experience sadness or sorrow of any description, it's only passing. 
It's only temporary. It's not your identity. But if you analyze and you judge it as bad and wrong, what's going to happen is you're going to make it your identity. You're going to entangle yourself to that sadness. So to disentangle yourself from that sadness is to allow it, give it safe passage, allow it to pass through you. Not holding on, not demanding it leaves, because this is not about pushing anything away. In the old healing paradigm, in the old spiritual community, very illusory world, the old spiritual community teachings, whether it was the New Age movement or old spiritual paradigms, they were very centered around push it away. In other words, reject, dispel, deny, dismiss, avoid, distract. These methods do not equate to healing. They equate to sidestepping. And sidestepping is only ever going to shove the problem into a deep container called the subconscious. And then, oh, then we've got a problem because then that subconscious, it's like a volcano. It wants to blow. And then we go, why am I getting this? What? And it can blow in a thousand different ways. It can blow in the form of mental illness, in the form of a, a skin rash, in the form of some kind of emotion or some kind of blockage. But you know that something's wrong. You just can't name it anymore because you can't feel it anymore because you can't access it anymore because you've locked it away. This is not about pushing something away. This is about bringing it closer so that you can meet it in the moment. And here's the beautiful thing about meeting energy in the moment. This is what alchemists do. And this is what I teach at my Plasma Light Tribe, the online community that I hold so dear to my heart. We are a group of everyday alchemists. And I want to show you a little glimpse into that alchemy. Alchemy is what happens when you transform an emotion from one state of being to another. Specifically, it's the transformation from a dense, low-frequency state of being into a high vibrational state of consciousness. So sadness, we could look at as a dense expression. When you tell that sadness what to become, what are you doing? You're trying to control this from your brain. That's not how alchemy works. Alchemy works on the foundation of acceptance, which is a neutrality, which is a non-judgment. So it's like saying, well, it just is. I just feel this in this moment. doesn't make me good, right, wrong, bad, sad, or ugly. It just is. It just is. And there's a certain courage that we have to get into to allow ourselves to see reality as it is. And I know that you think you're doing that. And we thought we were doing that in the false matrix. Of course, I'm seeing reality for what it is. What is she talking about? We were seeing it through so many filters and every time something rose from the energetic level, we pushed it up into the mind to try and make sense of it, to analyze it. And then we lost the ability to discharge it. Again, that's alchemy. Alchemy is the discharge. But remember, energy is never broken down or lost or taken away. It can only ever be transformed, right? So what we tried to do was very unnatural. We tried to shut down an existing energy. Whereas an alchemist realizes, I, I can't shut this down, but I can transform it. So in a sense, all of those he heavy, dense emotions are kind of like the, the, the clay to the alchemist's artistry. And it's going to remodel, reformulate that clay, but with very special tools. So allowing an acceptance are some of those special tools. And when you allow and when you accept what you allow and what you accept is also the higher realities. Because if you're looking at density and you're going, yeah, it just is, it's, it just is, sadness just is, and it's okay. Then you can also go, love just is, and it's okay. See, this works both ways. And now that you open yourself to a stream of higher frequency, that stream of higher frequency comes through you and it begins to transform that density that you've been working with, which in this case is sadness. And as it transforms, because you're not telling it what to change into, you're allowing, you're witnessing the transformation and you hold the knowing that it can only transform into a higher expression of itself. How it will do that, what it will look like, what form it will take. You're not putting that limitation on what you're alchemizing. So you're allowing from the perspective of this higher consciousness, almost like you're standing back as the witness. 
But your trust in light and your trust in love is so implicit that you know that that sadness is going to become miraculous in some way. Because the alchemist is always weaving miracles. The alchemist weaves a tapestry of golden miracles throughout their lives. And then they become a ripple of these golden miracles throughout the world. Sadness, usually, when it's alchemized, moves into its higher form, which is joy. And it doesn't have to do that. And it doesn't have to do it overnight. But the alchemist allows the process. And for each person, that process is different. So what I'm saying to you is, allow the alchemy of sadness. Allow it to do what it wants to do, which is to become joy. It wants to complete its cycle. So imagine that, that all energy wants to cycle back into love, into purity. It wants to be refined and redefined through you as the alchemist. So if you're feeling sadness, you're not alone. And if you're feeling sadness, then just bear in mind that you don't have to dismiss it and push it away because that denotes fear. That's what fear will do. Fear will say, oh, I don't want you. You're bigger than me. You're more. Po- you're a threat to me. So fear will try to push it away. But the alchemist says, come closer, come closer. You're my clay and let's play and let's see what new form you take when I bring my soul or my own higher consciousness in to work with you. Isn't it spectacular that we're learning these new skills, although they're not that new really, they're just the ancient memories resurfacing. So today I had this amazing call with my online community and in it we really got to step into the pause and that's why I'm making this video for you because I shared with them about the pause and I said to them, just step into that energetic pause that the energy is presenting to us right now. The universe is presenting the spectacular energetic pause. So be in it from the heart center. And from that place, you don't have to fear what rises then. Joy can rise. Sadness can rise. Now you are, in a sense, bulletproofing yourself against the things that used to make you wobble and used to make you jump back up into the brain. Let energy that comes in go out as energy. Don't bring the energy that comes in, <clears throat> excuse me, don't bring the energy that comes in as a feeling, don't bring that up into the brain to now try to make sense of it. Just let it flow. That's what you are. You are the space through which all of these frequencies flow from my heart all the way into yours, holding you in so much love.